Endometriosis is a very common condition in women that can cause chronic pain and problems. There's a lot of myths and misconceptions about this. We're gonna debunk some of these myths with Dr. Karen Tang here, so don't go anywhere. Hi my friend, welcome back to ChatterDocs. I'm Dr. Tor and I'm an internal medicine physician. In my channel, I talk about a lot of things in medicine and health and I believe that learning about health and medicine does not have to be boring. So if you're new here, please don't forget to subscribing to my channel and turning on the notification so you will never miss anything. Once again, I have a good friend of mine, Dr. Karen Tang, a gynecologist surgeon here with me. We did another episode on general matters about endometriosis and today, I asked her to join me in debunking myths about endometriosis. Again, Dr. Karen Tang specializes in minimal invasive surgery and she is an activist and public figure. She has Instagram account, YouTube account, and also TikTok. Don't forget to follow her for a lot of great videos. Hi, Karen. How are you? Hi, Sam. Thanks so much for having me again. So without further ado, let's talk about the myths and debunk them. Myth number one, endometriosis can be prevented. Unfortunately, no. And so we talked about in our other video that sadly we don't really know that much about endometriosis so it affects up to one in ten women or girls and even despite how common it is we don't know where it comes from we don't know we you know what predisposes people to it necessarily we can't predict who it's gonna show up in so sadly we can't predict it because we just don't know very much about it um, the few things that we do know are that it can run in families um, you know certain kind of risk factors and one of the big ones is that you know people who have relatives so endometriosis have a much higher risk of having it. People with certain kind of, you know, um, uh, developmental conditions involving the shape of the uterus, things called Mullerian abnormalities. Um, but other than that, there's no way to prevent it, unfortunately, you know, like birth control, like other lifestyle modifications, nothing can kind of keep you from getting it necessarily. So that's sort of sad. It's definitely something that we wish that, you know, in the future with more research and understanding that hopefully we'll be able to, but not based on what we currently know. So the next myth is because endometriosis is fueled, as you mentioned, by estrogen and, and the hormones. So one would think menopause can cure the endometriosis. Is that true? Not necessarily. And that, that is definitely a myth. Um, in most cases, you know, people after they go through menopause and their estrogen goes down because estrogen is what we think feeds the endometriosis, um, people do tend to get a lot better. It's very, very, very rare to have someone with significant endometriosis after menopause. Um, but the the issue is that even after you stop having periods, which is what menopause is, is you know not having periods for a full year, um, people still have estrogen. So their ovaries still make a little bit of estrogen. Um, your fat cells actually make estrogen. Um, so it's not that people have zero estrogen after they go through menopause. So the part of the you know problem is that people can still have some pain and issues afterwards. The good news is it's relatively rare uh, for someone who's after menopause age to still have problems, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. So it brings me to my next myth probably because of the same reasons that you just mentioned hysterectomy can cure uh, endometriosis interestingly that's even something that is said by some gynecologists um, and it's not true um, part of that where that idea came from is that one of the theories about where endometriosis comes from is that they say that potentially some cells from inside the uterus the endometrial tissue like the actual normal endometrial tissue which is what grows in the cavity of the uterus and that's what comes out like period blood some of that tissue actually kind of comes back outwards through your tubes into your abdomen when you have your period so not all of it goes forward through the vagina some of it goes backwards through your tubes um, there is a theory called Samson's theory that endometriosis is actually came from that tissue flowing backwards. So, um, you know, people thought, well, if you take out the uterus with a hysterectomy, won't you prevent endometriosis? Um, and that unfortunately is not true because again, we actually don't know where it comes from. It, it's actually probably not from what we call retrograde menstruation because people can get endometriosis in all sorts of crazy places, like in their thoracic cavity, like next to their mm -hmm. lungs, like Which in their nasal no cavity, like the, yeah. it can, in, in their belly button, like people can get it in very odd places places that obviously are not explained by period blood flowing backwards. And so, um, you know, uh, unfortunately that is a myth. Um, what it has been shown to do is decrease the likelihood that someone will need another surgery.
surgery. Part of my own theory about why that works is because there is something called adenomyosis, which is basically endometriosis, not outside of the uterus, but actually in the muscle of the uterus itself. It causes essentially the exact same symptoms. It's just located in a different place from endometriosis. So um, taking out the uterus does treat adenomyosis. And so people may feel a lot better and have less recurrence of symptoms if they get their uterus out, if they had adenomyosis, but not just endometriosis itself. Hysterectomy is sometimes used as part of the surgical treatment because you know endometriosis oftentimes will grow, say, between the uterus and the rectum and actually even cause them to fuse together. So sometimes the hysterectomy is performed to kind of separate off you know, with the rectum or find some endometriosis that's grown in that space between. So it is sometimes used as part of the treatment. It's not that the uterus removal itself um, does anything to the endometriosis, except it might help you get to disease that you ordinarily wouldn't be able to get to if it was stuck together or if there is some disease of the actual uterus itself. But in and of itself, it doesn't fix endometriosis. That actually brings me to my next question. It's the, I'm so a good nice at flow. this. A nice, <laughs> nice connection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so is endometriosis a type of cancer? Uh, no. So cancers are where, um, you know, abnormal tissues grow and they start to grow out of control and they start to invade um, other organs nearby or kind of spread through the bloodstream. Um, in some ways, the way it behaves kind of acts like that, but it's not a cancer in the sense that it, you know, it's not something that would become fatal if not treated, um, you know, though it can cause a lot of issues if it grows into the colon and things. There are associated cancers that are at increased risk in patients with certain types of endometriosis, especially types of endometriosis cysts of the ovaries, um, but that's exceedingly rare. That's very, very rare. So in my career of doing this for, you know, like 11 years in practice and five years of training, I've had three patients who had cancers of very, very large endometriosis cysts, and that's very rare. So um, it is something where there are certain types of uh, conditions, including big cysts, where there could be an increased risk of a type of cancer, say of the ovaries, um, but in and of itself, the endometriosis itself is not a cancer. Hold on a second. Did you say you're practicing for 11 years? Yeah. Plus your five years training? Yeah, I'm a lot older than I look. <laughs> uh, My you youthful know, Asian you skin. <laughs> <laughs> Even the last time you told me you have three kids, I was like, Yeah. Hmm. I'm like, what? Yeah. Uh, what? It doesn't I think it's, make the, sense. it's the TikTok too. People get confused because, like, oh, you're on TikTok and stuff. I'm like, no, nah, I'm like an old busted lady. No, I mean, physically speaking, you you fit in there, so Thank so you. no Thank problem. You. I mean, I thought you're in the practice for two max three years from your appearance oh thank you not from yeah, your yeah, experience yeah. But, you know it's funny uh, like wow. as a total aside like you know in medicine is one of the few times in life that you want to look older than you are so <laughs> I, when i first started i used to get so frustrated people were like oh you look so young you're too young to be a doctor and then suddenly at some point i got magically to a point where I looked old enough to be a doctor and then I got really sad because nobody said that anymore. <laughs> this brings me to my next myth. I'm too young to have endometriosis. So that is a very common myth and something that actually patients get to told by their doctors a lot that, oh, you're so young, you are probably just having normal periods. So, you know, people can have endometriosis even before menarche, even before their periods start. That's pretty rare, but um, there are some case reports of people who are very, very young like children uh, who were found to have endometriosis based on pain. So um, anyone who is having their period, I say is old enough to have endometriosis. I have actually just recently operated on a few like 18 or 19 year olds who had had symptoms for many years. Um, and then by the time we got to surgery, actually had a good amount of disease. And so, you know, um, part of the reason that I'm on, you know, TikTok and Instagram, you know, especially TikTok is to try and kind of reach people, you know, who are younger, who, you know, may, just be kind of learning about their periods um, just to make them aware of things like endometriosis that exists and that they could have. Um, you know, if they're having really bad pain, if they're missing school, if they're throwing up when they're having their period. Um, you know, there are a lot of people who are young who have just bad periods that they will grow out of, and that is true. Um, some people, you know, will have just lots of bleeding, lots of pain when they're younger, and it will get better. And it doesn't mean that they have something necessarily wrong like endometriosis. Um, but um, among teenagers who have really severe pain, especially if they still have pain despite trying birth control and ibuprofen, there's a pretty high chance of them having endometriosis if they're still having a lot of pain despite trying the usual things that make periods better. 
So that's definitely a myth that we need to bust and make sure that people are, you know, like looking out for uh, themselves and so forth. Can pregnancy cure endometriosis? Uh, no, also no. And this is also something that patients are told. Like I actually have a lot of patients who say, you know, my doctor told me just try and get pregnant and it'll fix everything. Um, I'm actually not even quite sure where this myth came from. Um, there is this sort of like long standing belief in kind of traditional OBGYN that like if someone gets pregnant, they will fix the endometriosis. Um, you know, some people do have improvement in their symptoms um, with pregnancy. Um, it's obviously a not a long-term fix if they have endometriosis once they're not pregnant anymore and the hormone, you know, levels adjust. It's still gonna be there. They're still gonna have the same pain. So uh, it's definitely not something that we we tell people anymore. We, we shouldn't be telling people anymore um, because it, it definitely does not adjust anything on a long-term basis. Awesome. So abortion can cause endometriosis. Oh, of course not. No. X. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the last myth, which could make a little sense, douching causes endometriosis. No. And then, you know, it's interesting. That's not one that, you know, I commonly hear, but I can sort of understand how someone came up with that idea. We were kind of saying about the, the tissue from inside the uterus not coming out, but going backwards. I can sort of see why someone would think if you push you know, water or fluids into the vagina, will it push endometriosis out from your uterus into your abdomen and, and definitely not. So um, douching in general doesn't go beyond the vagina. So um, it doesn't really get any sort of fluid into your uterus. Um, so it just stays in the vagina. Uh, total side note, no one should be douching anyway uh, because it destroys normal uh, healthy bacteria. You don't need to wash inside the vagina. There's a whole video we could do on that. But <laughs> um, the vagina is a self-cleaning oven. We say it cleans itself it does not need to be cleaned internally. So don't put anything in the vagina, just wash the outside with just water. That's like. <laughs> awesome. So don't douche, not because of endometriosis reasons, no, just, but because of other reasons. Just vaginal health. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me add um, one last one about only women get endometriosis. So. Oh, hold on. It's a myth? Yeah, well, I didn't because, know that. <laughs> da -da, cisgender women, but also trans men and gender non binary patients who have a uterus. Um, very commonly will have endometriosis as well, even if they are on testosterone and they don't have periods. So I actually care for a lot of uh, transgender patients or non-binary patients who may be on um, testosterone or other medications to kind of stop you know, their periods or decrease estrogen. Um, and they will still have endometriosis and pelvic pain. So a lot of times at the time of say a gender affirming hysterectomy or ophorectomy, um, I'll also consent them for excision of endometriosis as well and very, very commonly find it, even if they're not having periods, even if on testosterone. So it's a very, like I said, it's kind of an interesting condition in that, you know, even if the estrogen is low and they are kind of testosterone dominant, they can still have endo very commonly. So um, I do see patients, you know, who are trans who are, you know, coming in even not necessarily for the gender affirmation part, but because of pelvic pain, like they have chronic pelvic pain um, and actually benefit from the endometriosis surgery. Um, again, this is something that, you know, wanting to kind of, you know, put it out there so that people are aware because oftentimes trans or non-binary patients are very, 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 you know, reluctant to talk about menstruation, they have a lot of dysphoria surrounding issues of menstruation in the vagina. Um, and so it's, it's something they're very uncomfortable kind of bringing up. And so it's something that they may not you know, feel comfortable bringing up to a provider and just sort of are kind of quietly suffering with it. Um, so it is something very commonly found and that there is, you know, a good treatment for. And so um, a general, a lot of, you know, gynecologists, you know, will, will care for trans or non-binary patients. Um, there's also, if you look on the WPATH website, WPATH.org, it's like the World Professional Association for Transgender Health, uh, something like that. And it maintains a provider directory, including surgical gynecologists. And so, um, you know, people who are looking for a doctor that they can see if they are having symptoms and they're not quite sure who to go see about that, they can look up um, in that provider directory as well. Awesome. Yeah, I'll link down below in the description to that website as well. You brought up the very last uh, myth. It was it's a, a good bomb. one. Yeah. It, was a, it, was a, it was a mic drop, you know? Yeah. Like... <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Karen. That was, of course. Uh, it was a lot this of so fun. Much and, fun. And, and yeah, I learned a lot from you. Um, thank you guys for watching as well. Uh, again, consider subscribing my channel and also Dr. Karen Tang, MD. Um, on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. As always, take it easy.